Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Max with Buzz Talks here, and I'm back with a Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 5 breakdown video, where I'm just going to go through the episode and break down my key thoughts and insights on what happened. And overall, after watching this episode again, I'm left a little disappointed. I feel like all in all, some character arcs were rushed and were undermined. And as a penultimate episode to finish up the series, I thought it was pretty anticlimactic. But looking back, I've realized I have two key issues to this episode. And the real focal point is on two key characters. First, I feel like Daenerys' character was seriously undermined. I feel like she should have burned King's Landing to the ground. I thought that that was the perfect arc to her character. I just feel like the way that they displayed it did not make much sense and it didn't give any credit to her character. Maybe instead of first of all undermining Daenerys' intelligence and forgetting about the Iron Fleet and getting her dragon killed, and then in this episode just deciding to burn many, many civilians, maybe you keep Rhaegal around, and when the bell rings, have Rhaegal get shot and killed. Displaying that they showed mercy, but then took advantage of Daenerys to kill one of her dragons. That would justify her anger way more than this episode. Because not only would she blame Cersei for killing her dragon, she could also blame the people of King's Landing. But secondly, I am very disappointed in Jon Snow's character. I feel like last season they gave Jon a very key focus, but it was action set pieces that didn't really mean anything. They gave him a cool look at the Night King. They had him stick around and crash into the ice, leaving him for dead. But that scene didn't mean anything. It was action for the sake of action. And I feel like this time around, there's a lot of scenes that Jon could have that would have stakes to his character and they're not capitalizing on it. And they're replacing all of these scenes that Jon should be in with Arya. So for some reason, they're really discrediting Jon's character after season after season of character development. But all in all, the development of those two characters have really angered me, but to be honest, it really feeds into most characters in the show at this point. And that goes to the first concept of this episode, and that's the fall of Varys. Varys has been set up as the spider, with a mission to do what is good for the realm. But the one mystery to his character is no matter what, he always supports a Targaryen, even if it contradicts his want for a better world. And a lot of political intrigue was set up, because Jon is a Targaryen, and it would make sense for Varys to change allegiances to Jon's cause. I just feel like as a character he should have done more or been utilized more. What we got in this episode was Varys trying to assassinate Daenerys by feeding her poison, using the children that follow him. He also sent ravens across Westeros to notify people of Jon's bloodline. But on top of that, he completely confronted Jon about his heritage and telling him that he's not sure about Daenerys' sanity, but he is sure about Jon's. And I feel like Varys shouldn't have been on the nose like this. He should not have confronted Jon about his heritage, because as Varys proves, knowledge is power. And he tells Jon that power resides where men believe it resides, and that's something that Varys always said. But instead of Varys just sending out a couple ravens, trying to kill Daenerys, and talk to Jon about him sitting the throne, he should have done a lot more. And they should have utilized Varys' claim as being a spider. First of all, Varys is a manipulator, and he's a very intelligent person using the knowledge he gets from Whispers. For one, he could use Illyrio from Essos. He's a very wealthy man who could get in contact with the Golden Company or with the Bank of Bravos to try and create a new contract or to manipulate who the Golden Company follows. Instead of them being brushed aside like they were in this episode, utilize their Targaryen lineage. Varys could conspire with Illyrio to make a new contract to have them support Aegon Targaryen, which would be Jon Snow. That would give Jon an army and it would give Jon power in order to combat Daenerys. I just would have liked to see the power of Jon come from a whirlwind where Jon all of a sudden has all this power and support and people think that he's the king and he doesn't know how it happened, but it's revealed that it's Varys and then he gets killed for the actions that he's done. So I think all in all, it was a very quick end to a very substantial character. But then another aspect that the show dives into is the development of the madness of Daenerys. And all of this character development to make us really see that Daenerys is mad all happened in this episode. Daenerys had a lot happen to her. She lost Rhaegal. She lost the Greyjoy fleet, she lost Dorne, she lost the Tyrells, and she lost the majority of her armies fighting the White Walker threat, which in this episode they seem to remove all those stakes because the Dothraki were there and the Unsullied seemed in full force. So even though they set up all these stakes of Daenerys really being wounded, they retconned it all. But even though all that happened to her, they developed the madness aspect of Daenerys just in this episode. 
But Tyrion tells Daenerys that Varys betrayed her. And what we realize is that Daenerys feels completely isolated, that all of her allies are against her. Not only did Varys betray her, but Tyrion betrayed Daenerys because he shared the information that he got from Sansa, who also betrayed Daenerys' cause. And the person that she loves, Jon, Daenerys now believes that he betrayed her. So on top of Daenerys feeling completely isolated and broken, she realizes that she can no longer rule by love. She can only rule by fear. But the one problem with that realization is it goes against the complete development of her character over the last seven seasons. And she realizes this when she's talking to Jon. And like this whole season, he just keeps swearing that Daenerys is his queen. And for some reason, she kisses him and realizes that she needs to rule by fear. And we know that Grey Worm is on the same side because Masande was killed, so he's also angry towards the people of King's Landing. But the key issue I have is the push to make Daenerys mad didn't really make sense and it discredited her character entirely. When she was in the throne room speaking with Tyrion, Tyrion is defending the people of King's Landing, saying that they're basically hostages. And Daenerys actually says that the slaves in Marine fought the masters for her, and she wonders why the people of King's Landing aren't doing the same. And I find it mind-blowing how they wrote a character like Daenerys, who's proven to be intelligent, strong, but sometimes impulsive, be this stupid. The slaves fought the masters in Marine because they were slaves, and because Daenerys was liberating them. It's a completely different situation, and I don't like how they botched Daenerys' character by making her look this shallow. And in that same conversation, Daenerys thinks that Cersei knows their weakness. And Daenerys realizes that their mercy is their weakness. And that's the key difference between Daenerys at this point and Tyrion, because mercy is actually their strength. That's what they need to build a better world, and how to rid the world of tyrants. And I don't understand how they go from that aspect of Daenerys believing that mercy is their weakness, to her when the bells ring just deciding to kill civilians for no reason. Like, instead of going and just burning the Red Keep and killing Cersei, she decides to kill every member of King's Landing. The logic of that makes no sense. And then on top of that, she turns on her own counsel with Tyrion. She tells Tyrion that Jaime was caught on their lines, and the next time Tyrion fails her will be the last time. And this is going to show Daenerys' isolation next episode, where no one is going to be on her side. But then the battle happens, and Daenerys ends up burning everything. She burns Euron's fleet, and then she focuses on burning the Scorpion Ballistas, which makes sense. And then she blows through the front gates of King's Landing, and the Golden Company are destroyed for good. 20,000 men strong, destroyed in 10 seconds. But then the bells end up ringing. And that's the focal point of the episode, because the civilians of King's Landing are showing mercy. A lot of people give me an argument saying that Cersei never rang the bells. But how does that change this situation? And this aspect of the show honestly blew my mind. Daenerys is sitting there, and there's mercy, and nobody's attacking her, and all the Lannister force have dropped their swords, so they've won. Cersei now has nothing. She realizes that she has to rule by fear, but wouldn't this be a pinnacle moment in her character where she could choose to lead by example, like what she's wanted to do for the last eight seasons? She could have went to the Red Keep and beat Cersei for good, but for some reason she decides to burn innocent civilians who aren't fighting anymore. I don't think there's any justification that would make sense. And the show did a terrible job setting that up. So when I was watching the show, I was angry because what I was watching didn't make any sense. It's like Daenerys just decided to shoot herself in her own foot. That's why I'm saying this scene would be so much more believable if you didn't kill Rhaegal in episode 4, but you had him get killed right in this moment where everyone is waiting for surrender and Rhaegal gets shot. So everything ends up going chaotic, and this is the one aspect of the show that I did like, where the good people of the show ended up looking like the villains. Grey Worm starts killing the Lannister force who surrendered. Jon's men, all the North, end up fighting civilians and the Lannisters. And I really did enjoy seeing that, and I liked seeing the civilians' perspective of horror as a character that we've been following for a while, Daenerys, burns them all. And I loved how they follow Jon in the battlements trying to stop his men from killing all these people. But it's sad that that's all they did with his character. And the key aspect of Jon that I find important is this feeds into what Melisandre was saying all along. You will betray the men serving you, you will betray your family, you'll betray everything you once held dear, and you will be king. And Jon constantly supporting Daenerys has put him at his rock bottom. Because he blindly supported Daenerys, he essentially betrayed his family. And right now he's betraying everything he held dear. His honor. He has to kill innocent men. He's watching his people 
kill the innocent, all because he followed Daenerys. And I think next episode we're going to see him betray the one that he loves, Daenerys. So I think this episode really took Jon to the core of who he is. It destroyed everything he stood for, his honor. But that being said, I think it was very disappointing how Jon just got his men and retreated. I would have expected Jon to stay around and save civilians or do something of that nature. I think it would be much more pleasing to have Jon fill the role of what Arya took in this episode. Arya already had her moment in killing the Night King, and that should have been Jon's moment. So Jon should have been given something here. Be in the rubble of King's Landing, fighting to save the civilians that the one that you love is causing. It would create greater emotion to Jon, and it would provide even greater stakes between Daenerys and Jon's relationship. But moving on to another character arc, there's the Hound and Arya. They end up nonchalantly getting into King's Landing and making it to the Red Keep. I like the final send-off that they had, I felt like it was necessary. However, I felt like the Hound fighting his brother the Mountain was not necessary at all. I feel like they tossed away 8 years of character development. He built a relationship with Arya, he ended up getting defeated and humbled by Brienne, and then he was brought up by this guy who taught him grace. And how time isn't over for the Hound, he can actually do great things, and it felt like he was going in a different direction. He then joined the Brotherhood without banners, and they told the Hound that he had a purpose. But then they threw it all away for the Hound to get some simple vengeance. They developed his character to be more than that. And from a cinematic perspective, I didn't enjoy any time the Hound was fighting the Mountain. I don't know if I'm alone, but I feel like I've waited so long to see Daenerys take King's Landing. I wanted to see the fight between Cersei with all of our main characters. The last thing I want to focus on is a rivalry between two brothers that barely gets any screen time. And then there's Arya, who basically was used in this episode to show the devastation of what Daenerys has brought. And I think that Jon should have taken that role. From the Hound, she learned that she shouldn't be like him. And she did. But now going through all of that, it makes us feel like she's going to put Daenerys on her list next episode. So I just would have rather Arya learning her lesson and going to help the Stark soldiers, her family. It's her coming full circle. And Jon would stay behind and help civilians because he felt responsible for causing it. But then we go to the last aspect of the show and that's the end of an era. The end of Jaime and Cersei. And I thought the Jaime character was royally butchered. He was one of the greatest written characters in TV history. He was a character that we first hated when he pushed Bran out the window, and then we started to have sympathy for him. We realized that he cared for the civilians of King's Landing, and that's the reason why he killed the Mad King. But he put on the shell and persona to protect who he really was. And he was constantly hated for being a Kingslayer, for doing something that was very honorable and right. And we've seen him come full circle, especially in this season, where he decides to do the right thing. He wants to fight with the living. He's humbled because he wants to fight for Brienne. But then he immediately decides he's a bad guy. He tells Tyrion that he doesn't care for the civilians of King's Landing. And he dies in the arms of Cersei. They should have pushed it further that Jaime is still this great guy. But the key issue is that he's in love with somebody who is not. They shouldn't have made Jaime a bad guy to fit back in with his sister. They should have emphasized on that tragedy. That he cannot stop his sister from doing crazy things. And he disagrees with her actions, but he still loves her. Which would result in maybe instead of just holding each other getting crushed by rocks, maybe it could have more stakes. And he tries to stop her from killing people of King's Landing. But that goes against his love for her. And Jamie could have done the right thing and killed the one that he loved and died still with her in his arms. And that goes to Cersei where I feel like they developed her character in episode 5. And that goes on to Cersei where I feel like in the last couple seasons they made her ruthless. They made her not stop, and it felt like Cersei was constantly pushing Daenerys' buttons and she didn't care. But then, just like Daenerys, they completely betrayed Cersei's character arc and made her extremely humanized. Where she's begging to live, she's begging to protect her kid. But she should have thought of that when they were negotiating to make an allegiance with Daenerys, when she was going to execute Missandei. She had time and time again to do something right, but then her character was just brushed aside. I felt like if Cersei was acting this way, she would have at least had a plan that would have really defeated Daenerys, but it was just one-sided. And then there's the end of Euron. And this character honestly was turned into a giant joke, and I feel like the battle between Jaime and Euron, I just wanted it to be over because it had no stakes. It's just like the Hound fighting his brother. Why would I want to watch Jaime fight Euron for one last time? These characters have no relationship, there's no rapport between them hardly. And there's a giant battle at King's Landing going on. And it's something we've been waiting for for years. 
So all in all, I think Jamie and Cersei's end was very anticlimactic, and it didn't capitalize on any plot trends that they developed previously. So to wrap everything up, based on what we've seen in this episode, I think we can expect a couple things. It's clear that Daenerys has decided to rule by fear, and I think we're going to see that continue next episode. She's made it clear in this episode that she feels like Jon betrayed her, that Sansa betrayed her, and Tyrion has betrayed her. And on top of that, Tyrion has issued his last chance by setting Jaime free. So I think Daenerys will turn on her council and the people that were closest to her and really become alone. And it will become a point of desperation on how they stop her. And at this point, there's not many spinning plates. We have Arya who witnessed the devastation that Daenerys brought, and maybe that's the last person that she added onto her list. And then there's Jon, who betrayed everything he was to support Daenerys, even his honor, where he had to watch his men fight innocent people, and he had to do the same. So I think next episode is just going to focus on the demise of Daenerys and focusing on how to build a better one. But that's all I got to say about this episode. Please let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.